This is pretty good news for people that consume a little bit of flax. It's interesting because most of us know now how Ozempic works, because Ozempic works upon a gut incretin, which is called GLP-1. Now, that influences our appetite significantly and subsequently eat less and lose weight. But the thing is, is that's a very isolated system. And it's really hard to isolate that with food. We have to look at the bigger systems, right? The bigger systems that control appetite and ultimately weight gain or weight loss are things like leptin. So the research on leptin is kind of foggy, but now we're starting to understand a little bit more. Leptin can influence GLP-1. So it's almost like GLP-1's big daddy, right? So it influences a lot of things metabolically, including GLP-1 and neuropeptide Y and these other things that influence appetite. So we're learning now that flax has unique characteristics. And I know there might be concern with flax being estrogenic, but I can put that to bed pretty good with some good research that's out there showing that flax is a little bit different in the world of phytoestrogens. It, it docks differently, it, it translates into something different. So we'll explain all of that. So let's get into how you can utilize flax to influence appetite and have a, an Ozempic-like effect, even though it's certainly not going to be as potent as an intervention like Ozempic, it's going to have similar mechanisms downstream. It can have an impact. It can definitely influence appetite and ultimately weight loss. After today's video, I put a link down below for Nomadic. So if you go anywhere, let alone travel or go to work or take a bus or a train or a plane, then these things are a complete game changer. And I mean that. This is something that, first of all, pretty well insulated, but they're expandable Navigator Series backpacks. So if you look at them, these things are huge. Like I can carry so much stuff. My recent trip to Switzerland, when I was looking at different foods and creating content out there, I was able to pack all kinds of food in this backpack. I was able to pack all my toiletries. I was able to pack my electronics. I could literally travel through Europe with this pack and it doesn't even feel like a giant backpack. Not to mention, it can accommodate my laptop, it can accommodate a bunch of other things. It's just a game changer. But of course, Nomadic has a bunch of other things too. They have their method luggage, which I'm a big fan of, extremely light and a huge storage capacity. It has some of the biggest storage capacity of any luggage on the market because they've really looked at how they can use even the wheel wells to ultimately create more space while still using a thin material that is structurally sound to make it extra, extra light. So that link down below is for a special discount on Nomadic. Now, now, again, I recommend their backpacks, their Navigator series in all kinds of different sizes. So that link is in the top line of the description underneath this video, not just for traveling, they're for going to work and just for regular life. So we look at a study published in the journal Agriculture and Food Chemistry. What's funny about this is this study was looking at flax polysaccharide. So it wasn't even looking at the whole spectrum flax. The cool thing is if you were to actually consume full spectrum flax, you're gonna get the omega-3s, the alpha linoleic acid, which has an impact on appetite as well, but we're not even focusing on that. This was like pure isolated flax polysaccharide, showing that there's a unique effect there. Now we have to understand quickly before I get into the nuance of flax seeds, how leptin works. Like leptin is secreted by fat tissue on our body. So the more fat that we have, the more leptin we produce. And the idea behind leptin is supposed to be like a self-governing system where it tells our brain we have enough fat on hand so we don't need to uh, eat more. Hey, you're good, you got enough fat, start burning what you got. But the problem is as you eat more and as you gain more weight, you become leptin resistant where your cells and your brain does not listen to the leptin anymore. But leptin doesn't just influence appetite, it also influences fat oxidation at the localized level too, meaning high circulating leptin without actually being able to receive the signal from it will certainly make you wanna eat more. But it's a double whammy effect because high circulating leptin is also going to impede fat oxidation at the actual adipose and like cell level. So you're eating more and not oxidizing or burning fat well. That's a huge problem. So where does flax come in? Well, with this, when they looked at the flax polysaccharides, they found there was a reduction in body fat when flax polysaccharides were consumed, but also a specific reduction in abdominal fat, which is really fascinating. So I'm gonna read an excerpt from the researchers in this study specifically. The effect was achieved by removing leptin resistance, possibly by inhibiting inflammation and recovering satiety through significant downregulation of neuropeptide Y and upregulation of GLP-1. Whoa, whoa, we're finding out that the reason people lost fat, specifically abdominal fat, when consuming flax was because of two things. 
Well, three things. One, it reduced inflammation. Two, it decreased neuropeptide Y, one of the strongest hunger drive systems in our brain, and a subsequent decrease in, of course, or increase in GLP-1, which we know the mechanism of. So we have now reduced inflammation, which allows for leptin to receive, uh, be received, right? Reducing that inflammation improves leptin resistance. We've reduced the brain neuropeptide Y hunger drive, and we've increased the systemic sort of gustatory gut incretin of GLP-1. So a double whammy at the very least, possibly a triple whammy if you count the inflammation as a third aspect to it. So this has a huge impact on leptin overall. The more that we can reduce inflammation, the more that leptin can start to regain its signal, and we can actually have true authentic governing of our appetite the way that we're meant to be when it's not discombobulated and disrupted by all the other crud we're bringing into our body. So you're gonna have an increase in GLP-1 the way that you should when you eat. That's exactly what we're all after. I think any of us out there would say, yeah, I would rather just my body do what it's supposed to do rather than having to Mickey Mouse things together with broken metabolisms like 94 to 96% of us have to deal with because that's the actual statistic on people that have metabolic issues or are not optimized or at least functioning optimally as far as their metabolism is concerned. So we'll come back to how to use that in just a second. Like I would recommend doing certain things with flax. I'll talk about that in a second. I wanna talk about the estrogen thing because there was a study published in Frontiers in Nutrition and it helped explain it in a way that really resonated with me. There is a lignin called SDG that is in flax and it gets converted in our gut, in a healthy gut, to what is called enterolactone. Now enterolactone is a phytoestrogen. But what happens is this phytoestrogen binds to an estrogen receptor and it actually blocks actual estrogen from binding to that receptor. So this study was actually done in oncology research and it was looking at like those situations and found that when flax was used, it actually bound to an estrogen receptor, thereby lowering estrogen level for a more preferred result. I'm careful with the words that I say because YouTube will sometimes ding a video if you talk about certain words. So hopefully you're getting the gist of what I'm talking about here. The bottom line is when flax was consumed, it actually lowered estrogen levels because the estrogen was not able to bind into the receptor. So imagine having like a fake boat docked at the dock so that the real boat can't come in. That's essentially what was happening. Now let's talk about how to use flax. Okay, one of the things that I would do, I would almost always have flax with protein. Okay, since flax is stimulating this overall like leptin signaling and potential NP, uh, neuropeptide Y and GLP-1. If you consume it with protein, you're gonna double whammy this. So I usually do flax meal. You take flax seeds and you grind it fresh because the oils can go rancid pretty quick. So you don't wanna have grind it and then leave it sitting out. So freshly grind it, mix it into yogurt, like Greek yogurt, get the protein content up high. You're getting the fiber, you're getting the lignans, you're getting all this stuff along with the protein and of course the probiotics and yogurt or cottage cheese. You barely notice the difference in the taste, it works perfectly. I do not recommend having it you know, with a bunch of high carb stuff. You're just kind of canceling it out a little bit unless you wanna use the flax to negate some of the glycemic response that you get from those carbs. So keeping it pretty low carb. Another thing that you can do is quite literally mixing it with cottage cheese or even mixing it in a whey protein shake and just pounding it and shooting it really quick. Those are really powerful ways. Now, anytime that you wanna add kind of an extra boost to it, you can add allulose. Allulose is a type of sugar that doesn't have a really glycemic index or a glycemic uh, effect. And it's one of the most potent stimulators of GLP-1. So like I use allulose and all kinds of things. I usually use protein powders that are sweetened with allulose or I'll add it into my Greek yogurt to sweeten my Greek yogurt along with a little bit of flax. And it ends up making like a nice little ozempic like not really, but ozempic like effect sort of food. Right? So now we're finding this out, it seems like flax is a good thing to add in either way from a fiber perspective and whatnot, because there was also a study that was 11 different studies, it was a meta-analysis that found that soluble fiber, which flax is definitely a soluble fiber, was one of the strongest correlators when it came down to leptin levels. So essentially the higher the fiber intake, the better the leptin resistance, right? So we have all kinds of reasons to be consuming flax independent of the polysaccharide potential direct effect. There's also the fiber effect as well. So as always, keep it locked to hear my channel. See you tomorrow.